Good morning, this is Greg, N4KGL. I'm in my front yard, the driveway, and it is uh, approximately two weeks from field day. Uh, I am doing field day at a campsite at Falling Water State Park. And uh, due to the space limitations, I came up with what I call the field day loop antenna. It is uh, 100 feet of wire configured as a loop, uh, 30 feet across, uh, 20 feet down, and it can be fed at the bottom center, the bottom corner. And today I am um, going to uh, continue uh, experimenting with the loop, and uh, I may. Uh, uh, use it uh, with a KX2. I'll explain a little more about that later. But anyway, uh, I put the loop on a reel here and uh, 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 that seems to be working uh, fine. And it's the loop and uh, some 300 ohm uh, feed line. Uh, as you can see on the driveway, I got the coax. Uh, there are three poles. There are jack kite poles uh, that are 31 feet high. And uh, I uh, <coughs> drive these stakes into the ground, <coughs> only about a foot. And I tie the poles with these uh, wire wraps uh, which come in very handy. Uh, you can find those on Amazon. And to drive in these angle iron pieces, uh, I do have a sledgehammer. It gets the job done. Over here is the ICOM AH4 tuner. And it works perfectly, of course, with ICOM, ICOM gear like uh, the 7100 or the 70. 300 um, but I'm trying out something new today this is uh, a little box that will let you use the ICOM AH4 with other rigs uh, like the Elocraft and uh, we're going to find out how that works so it uh, just received that these two poles are to hold up the tuner and so this is pretty much the field day loop uh, ready to go. I've laid out the antenna so uh, I can locate where the poles go and uh, this is uh, one end, uh, this is the center and uh, continuing over here where these insulators are, this will be the third pole over here. All right, here's the center pole. Only needs to go in about a foot. A trick. <laughs> Or a necessity is to pull out the first, uh, the first little section, so that you can uh, uh, get to it. And we'll uh, go ahead and set up the center pole here. All right, so one tie at the bottom. One tie at the top. So very nice. Uh, let's see. Yep. We'll go ahead and drop the center 
uh, over right there and it's going to turn out that the top is also going to go right here all right i've located uh, this end with the insulators and uh, this way i know exactly where uh, the pole goes so i'll go ahead and do the uh, angle iron and uh, tie it off all right here's the uh, pole on the uh, east side all right the west pole is in and as you see there are two insulators uh, at the end and uh, this extra wire is what will be the vertical part of the loop and coming on down this is the uh, center and uh, the center top is just twisted together and then we have the center insulator right there so this is the part I really enjoy is uh, pushing up the antenna and we'll start that process now so here it goes we'll only do a few links on uh, each pole at a time so it doesn't kind of uh, get too tight <clears throat> between poles looks like it's pretty tight at the top but the poles will bend a certain amount so <laughs> people at the campsite uh, are really curious about what this is and they won't know until they come ask about it but I don't have to swing the poles. I don't have to swing the poles around. <clears throat> they just, everything pushes up. You have to uh, kind of make sure it's uh in fact it just did if it's not if it's not uh, snug enough it will collapse on you so so you gotta snug up each section there and there's some uh, wire ties that or the right diameter for the last section. Let's see. I think that is near where it's going to stop. We'll see. See, I believe this one. All right, so the uh, insulators only go down so far on the pole because uh, the bottom is going to be 10 feet above the ground. And uh, this is the uh, corner where I can 
feed it it's jumpered right now all right so now the bottom of the loop is going up takes a few minutes but it is easy to do all right this one is all the way up the center is all the way up keep it snug and finally the east end is all the way up Uh, so there we go, uh, a hundred foot of wire, and I have the feed line at the bottom center, and uh, I like it because there's not a lot of stress at the t or weight at the top of the three, three poles, just that one length of wire up there. And uh, so uh, we're ready to uh, continue. All right, I'm putting in the step-in fence post, electric fence post. It, to hold up the tuner, it is not, it works well uh, if you can get the post, the pointy end in, but at the campsite, I can just barely get them stuck in because it has gravel. And here's the uh, AH4. Uh, we could always vary the distance on those. So the AH4 has uh, the coax uh, for the RF, and then it has, um, I think it's about a 20 foot. Uh, 25 foot length of cable uh, that uh, goes in the tuner. I do have an extension cable uh, if I need it. So, um, the basic uh, antenna installation is uh, complete. The next part will be uh, hooking it up to the rig and uh, we'll try out the new box uh, that will let me use the ICOM AH4 on other um, on other rigs besides ICOM. Well, this is the 300 ohm line. It is very important to hook that up to your tuner. Here's the uh, <clears throat> top terminal <clears throat> a little harder to get to down here is the bottom terminal like this tuner uh, a lot of nice things about it uh, the instructions I don't believe say that it will work with a loop antenna or even uh, a doublet a balanced antenna. I guess this antenna is balanced. <clears throat> it 
it's a symmetrical loop but nevertheless it works uh, wonderful with these config those configurations uh, I do have a uh, a uh, choke here on the coax just kind of for insurance so all right we got our 300 ohm line uh, hooked to our tuner all right this is the uh, RG8 type coax Uh, at the campsite, uh, the antenna and my uh, pop-up canopy are really are close, so this length the coax seems to work out. Though, if I feed it from the end, we'll have to see about that. All right, well, it's uh, ready for a rig. Well. Here's the KX2 in its little bag. Uh, you will find that the KX2 is the smallest item that you'll pack up for your uh, portable Audi. And we have, we have the antenna here. And our uh, Artcraft Electronics uh, AH4 tuner interface uh, has a key input to the rig and it has it does need 12 uh, volts so we'll turn on the rig we're at a quiet spot and we'll press the tune button. All right, it was a very short tune, uh, but uh, the uh, SWR is 1.1 to 1. And this is at uh, 40 meters uh, sideband. Uh, this is the uh, South Cars net that's going on. So I tell you what, I'll go down to the CW portion. Don't hear anybody. I'll uh, press the tune button. And it's 1.1 1 .1 to 1 again. So uh, it appears that uh, the uh, box uh, is doing its job uh, with the uh, ICOM AH4 uh, using with the Elecraft rig. Uh, and uh, so we'll be uh, testing this out on the uh, second Saturday sprint and uh, uh, see how it works for uh, 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 real QSOs.